So you want a GPU that'll do ray tracing? Well, get an NVIDIA card. You'll hear that or a similar variation in nearly every GPU review and recommendation. I'm not here to dispute that or say it's bad advice, I agree with it. But I do think the RX 6000 series, RDNA 2, deserves a closer look when it comes to this next-gen graphical technique. RDNA 2 doesn't top Nvidia's Ampere in ray tracing, but I think it did a lot better than many were expecting, especially with their first RT-capable product. So, how do the cards in the 6000 series stack up? I'll begin with Port Royale, and before anybody says synthetic benchmarks, don't worry, we'll get to games too. But also, bit of a bugbear, 3D Mark tests are not synthetic. A synthetic benchmark is an isolated test with minimal bottlenecks. Think like uh, the memory bandwidth in the flops test in IDA64. 3D Mark's Time Spile or Port Royale are game engines. They are designed to provide repeatable results, but that does not make them any more synthetic than a benchmark run in a game. They stress many different parts of the GPU and system which all have to work together cohesively. Here's a bit of history. Starting in the 1980s, there was a little thing called the demo scene. Developers, musicians and artists would compete to create the most bombastic and technically daring demonstrations possible on the hardware of the time. My personal favourite group was the Finnish team Future Crew. I think a lot of people remember their name. Their work with Unreal and Second Reality pushed hardware to the limits or beyond. They were inspirational to a generation of coders. Back then, all PC graphics started like this. Twenty-eight years ago, there was no such thing as a 3D accelerator. All the graphics were rendered on a single CPU core which ran at a speed of less than 0.1 GHz, all while mixing multi-track audio in the background, which also had to be done entirely in software. And then your finished product had to fit on a 1.44 meg floppy disk. Executable, data, music, everything. Members of this seminal demo crew went on to form Remedy Games, who brought us Max Payne and Alan Wake, and then later, of course, Control, and members went on to also form Future Mark, or 3D Mark. Hardcore optimizing of PC graphics is in the DNA of 3D Mark, and what we end up with is one of the most accurate predictors of overall gaming performance. To demonstrate this, here's a game roundup from Hardware Unboxed. Multiple benchmark runs over 18 modern games at 4K using DirectX 12. Let's compare the TimeSpy Extreme results to Hardware Unbox's rankings. And here we see the rankings line up perfectly. And, more importantly, our average deviation is only off by 1.2%. You can take a TimeSpy score and then predict its relative performance to within about 10%. So that's why when I evaluate a GPU for gaming, I start with 3 d Mark. It is a very good baseline benchmark. But enough about early 90s PC graphics, we've come a long way from there. We now have real-time hardware acceleration of ray tracing functions, which many people would have thought impossible back then. So let's have a look at Port Royale. Obviously the $1500 Power Hungry RTX 3090 is at the top of this list. But if we're going to answer the question, can the RDNA 2 parts ray trace, then objectively yes they can. Both the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT beat NVIDIA's previous Turing flagship, the $1200 at launch RTX 2080 Ti. They both beat second generation Ampere RTX 3070s. Even the RX 6800 beats the 2080 Super in ray tracing, and it beats the second generation RTX 3060 Ti. Moving down the stack, the new 6700 XT beats the RTX 3060. So, Performance is not necessarily the problem. If you want maximum gaming performance with maximum RT performance, then RDNA 2 really offers very poor value. Perhaps a little strangely, it's only with the RX 6900 that we see better value on Team AMD. In every other case, you get at least 8% better bang for your buck on Nvidia cards. So RDNA can actually ray trace quite well and is a significant upgrade over Turing, but the value is off. 
perhaps somewhat compounded by current market conditions. Alright, that's enough of Port Royal and benchmarks, let's get to some games. Tom's Hardware has a roundup using a 10 game average. At 1080p, the 6800 XT is a solid upgrade of the 2080 Ti, delivers a very playable 75fps with ray tracing at ultra. At 1440p, that drops to 55fps, which is 8% higher than the 2080 Ti and still beats an RTX 3070. A big 22% gap remains between the 6800 XT and the RTX 3080, but it's still usable performance. But that's the average. There's a very big spread between the individual titles, because optimizing for these cards is very different, and how they perform in certain RT workloads is very different. RDNA 2 ray tracing performance is absolutely tanked in NVIDIA sponsored titles. Control was developed specifically for Turing with heavy input from NVIDIA. Cyberpunk's ray tracing was also developed on Turing. NVIDIA announced their partnership with CDPR in June of 2019. RDNA 2 cards wouldn't be announced for another 526 days. Support for ray tracing with RDNA 2 was only patched in after release, while CDPR was battling a host of other issues. Minecraft ray tracing also falls into the same category of long-term NVIDIA sponsorship, an early showcase for their technology. Watch Dogs Legion is a bit of a mixed bag, but mostly leans towards NVIDIA. Metro Exodus is not too bad for AMD. Top spot goes to NVIDIA, but the mid-range cards do alright. AMD again performs acceptably well in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And 1% lows tell an interesting story here, with a tight grouping at the top 4 spots, and even the 6800 beating the 3070 in that regard. And you get pretty great performance from AMD in Godfall, where somewhat incredibly, the 6800 XT's 1% low performance even beats the RTX 3090's. Just as shocking to see the 6800's 1% lows up there with the 3080's. At this point, Nvidia's ray tracing is the known quantity. All the developers understand it, everybody's been developing on Turing already. AMD's at a disadvantage. It's not that they can't ray trace, they clearly can. It's just that it's very dependent on the specific title. Here's a good example of how things can change dramatically based on what scene is being used. Cornell Box and Lucy, terrible for AMD. Cornell Box, terrible for AMD. Lucy in one weekend, not good for AMD. Oddly, really good for AMD. Also oddly, really good for AMD. So to summarize so far, RDNA 2's performance is actually pretty good on average. Although its performance is heavily seen or title dependent, and at current pricing the value is just too low if we're only looking at RT. The bigger question then is, will they be able to compete more effectively in future titles? We don't have a lot of ray tracing titles on PC that have been in any way optimized for AMD's new cards, so it's a little hard to tell. The ray trace global lighting system used in the new Resident Evil 8 Village shows us beautiful results still running at 60 frames a second. That's a good start, and the 6800 XT only suffers a 17 to 20% performance deficit over the competing RTX 3080. The 6800 XT only being, in theory, 7% less expensive, so we come back again to that value proposition. One title which is no doubt going to help us with our analysis is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. Ray traced global illumination, ray traced emissive surfaces, infinite bounces, and ray tracing reflections all at the same time. This promises to be quite a punishing title. Digital Foundry has also done a little analysis of this title. And what we discover is the 3080 is faster than the 6800 XT, but the only compromise is a move from Ultra to Normal GI. It would be nice to run at Ultra, but it's not going to change the experience fundamentally. What these games show is, if you bought a 6000 series GPU because you didn't care about ray tracing, the good news is, you might not care about it now, but you're not going to miss out in the future. The early RTX games were essentially tech demos for the Turing architecture. But what these two games show is even the lowest end of AMD's stack will give you perfectly playable frame rates with RT on, including GI and reflections, provided a little bit of engine optimization has been done. And AMD GPU owners have the consoles to thank for this. In the past, Nvidia's dominance on the PC has made it a little bit difficult to get AMD specific optimizations done. With both next generation consoles using AMD RDNA 2 derived GPUs, that's changed a little bit. Now if you want to put ray tracing in your game, you optimize for AMD first, and then Nvidia on the PC. On the consoles, we now have the likes of Metro Exodus Enhanced, Resident Evil Village, Returnal, 
and pretty soon Ratchet and Clank, which all run around 1440p, 60 frames a second, with various RT features enabled, reconstructed to a near-perfect 4K. And that's on a GPU no more powerful than a 6700 XT. If you're going to optimize to that level for the RDNA 2 based architecture of these consoles, that's probably going to translate reasonably well to their PC counterparts. This of course doesn't mean that AMD will magically be faster than Nvidia on the PC when it comes to ray tracing. That's not going to happen. But what it does mean is the 6000 series GPUs won't be artificially hamstrung. Not too long ago, we only had RTX PC titles on which to base our analysis. And naturally that meant a lot of poor conclusions were made about AMD's RT performance capabilities. One thing people said a lot was that AMD's RT was only good at simple effects like shadows or reflections. Now the consoles and a couple of new PC titles have objectively shown us that's not the case. All RT effects are possible at playable frame rates, as long as the implementation has been done well. And that's not to say Nvidia doesn't still have a lead, I think they do. But this argument is still interesting because it appears to be supported by the Vulkan R6 benchmark results. Does RDNA 2 have a fundamental problem in certain scenes? To dive into that question, we're going to look at the world of offline rendering. AMD provides a production-ready rendering system, ProRender. It's compatible with 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, SolidWorks, Maya, Blender, and the list goes on. This physically accurate renderer is used for commercial work, advertising, product design, cinema, architecture, and so on. As you can imagine, these scenes vary wildly. Different materials, lighting, some are full of reflections, some use fur and hair. If RDNA 2 has a weak point, we might be able to spot it amongst the render times for various production scenes. Moving from the 5700 XT to 6800 XT provides an average improvement of 56%, but that's a terrible comparison. The 6800 XT is a newer architecture with more shaders, higher clock speeds, and a stonking big L3 cache. But that isn't the comparison we're trying to make, we're looking for weak points. And here we see the biggest improvement is about 95%, while the worst is 38%. And that's actually a pretty typical spread for such a diverse array of scenes. We also have a comparison turning RT acceleration on and off on a 6800 XT. And here again we see a reasonably similar spread, the worst being a 23% improvement and the best being a 47% improvement. For an average 35% speed up. Looking at Nvidia's performance increase going from CUDA to optics in an array of scenes using production renderers, we see a 28 to almost 50% performance increase for an average 36%. Pretty similar average speed ups with some scenes being more demanding and getting more benefit from RT accelerations versus others. In the de facto standard scene of Classroom, we see that AMD gets a speed up of 35% and Nvidia gets a speed up of 28% when going from CUDA to Optics. These comparisons using the company's own renderer in real scenes is great because unlike games, we can be very sure that each company has dedicated a lot of resources towards optimizing these code paths. Games are horribly variable because each developer is constrained by their experience or their skill or their time or simply the internal priorities given to adding ray tracing features. To sort through that, you need a lot of data points, and unfortunately this early on, we just haven't had that for both Nvidia and AMD architectures. Looking at the bigger picture, we now have AAA titles on the PC that run with RT features turned on at acceptable frame rates at all levels of GPUs, including the lowest of the stack. We also have multiple RT-enabled games running on consoles at 60 frames a second. It's been over two years since the release of Turing, and we now have ray tracing available to everybody, no matter the system, no matter the tier of GPU you purchase. And that means the age of ray tracing has truly begun. And the only thing standing between being an acceptable ray tracing card and being a great ray tracing card is a bit of a price reduction.